ASC area is clear for launch. Copy. And word that the blast danger area has been cleared of all personnel for the launch this morning. Still targeting 7.05 for our liftoff time. Yeah, it's clearing up nicely. Checking the flight controls of Endeavour. Final check before liftoff of the uh, rudder and Alamans. We'll be checking the main engines. Do you want to do it again? Yeah. Are you happy? OK, and remember, walk out this way. Go that way, huh? Hi, Ali KTV seere. Dagens videopostkort for USA er faktisk lidt specielt i dag. For jeg står her ved Cape Kennedy. T minus five minutes. Yeah, let's go for open race here, start. TLT, OTC, perform APU start. Work in space. Kevin Chilton uh, now flipping three switches in the cockpit to start each of the three APUs. T minus one minute. Now turning off the joint heaters on the solid rocket boosters. Endeavour's computer is now controlling. Seven, six, main engine start. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, and liftoff of the space shuttle Endeavour, observing the changes of planet Earth. Jettison of the twin solid rockets. Yeah! Good solid rocket booster separation confirmed. Never now, 33 miles northeast of the launch pad, altitude 30 miles, speed 2,700 miles an hour. Never performance nominal. Copy, performance nominal. It means now if it loses one engine, it can still make it to Africa. Speed now, 13,600 miles an hour. 600 miles northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. 5,000 miles an hour to go. He's really hauls ass in the last. For speed, 16,400 miles an hour. Yeah, you came on 3,000 right there. Present to Miko. The longest 18 minutes in the world that exists from T-minus 9 until main engine shutoff. And it's almost hard to breathe during that period of time. Booster officer confirms the good cutoff as the main engine. All right. Yes. All right. Good job on the engine, buddy. Nice job, John, Mel. Yeah. Hey, nice job. Good job, buddy. We're up there. We, um, everything's uphill, we call it. You work for months, two or three months on an orbiter to get it ready. And when, when the engines light up and it fires off the pad, it's just like you feel it right in your gut. It's, it's absolutely perfect. It's beautiful. Wow. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's as good as sex. <laughs> oh, couldn't be better. I mean, everything worked. No fits, funnies, fails, or falls. Hey, JB. Well, it's a tradition, at least. When you got something working for you, you don't change it. <laughs> He's holding on your beans here. Yeah. Manned access to space, we feel, is on our shoulders. Uh, it has to be damn near perfect every time because we can't tolerate a failure. We can't tolerate it. 
It's a zero tolerance program. And I think everybody in NASA realizes that. And no one wants to make the small incremental mistake that puts the space shuttle at risk, not only again for the human tragedy, but also for the enormous political consequences. So this is an agency that lives in fear of making a little mistake and that grinds the wheels to a halt. I think it is time for the American public to fish or cut bait. Um, either it wants to go to space uh, or it doesn't. And if it does decide to go to space and it wants to keep the people in space, then I think it's got to grow up. Uh, and it's got to decide uh, that you take your hits. You pay for this with blood and treasure. Should we crawl into a cave and assume the prenatal position and say, oh God, I'm so worried about launching a shuttle? NASA cannot live in fear. I tell our people to take risks, do everything possible to make it as safe as possible. But we will not stop flying. We've got to go to the boundary. Now, if America decides if we have a problem to cancel a program because we've lost that ability to take risk, I cry for America, not for NASA.